This is more than a grocery so, market. I mean, this is more than a food market. Well, yeah. I mean, part of our mission and vision is to, you know, be a community hub and where people come to gather, not only to buy food or whatever, but to, to socialize and meet with people. And This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. I'm in my hometown of Grass Valley in front of what's going to be opening very soon, our new Briar Patch Co-op Community Market, which has been the dream for a long time. I am with a manager, general manager, Paul Harton. You must be excited. I'm very excited. That's real. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be scary and, <laughs> and wonderful all at one time to have such a large new space. Where did we start? What, I mean, our little store right now is how big? Uh, 3,000 square feet. And this is? 11,000. My goodness! <laughs> so yeah, it's quite a leap. Um, and we're very excited and, uh, you know, in the process this of bringing on lots of new staff and training and It'll all get done. Oh, yes. It'll all oh, turn yeah. out. You know, we're in crunch time, but it'll all get done. Well, take us back. I mean, first of all, this is a cooperative. And part of what I want to mention is a cooperative is a different model for having a business than a profit business. So give right. us, what's a, what's a co-op We're a like? consumer-owned co-op, which means that the people who shop in the store are owners. And each of them owns one share in the company. And uh, they elect a board of directors who hires me to be the general manager. And, and we make store. our decisions. I mean, so we have a and say so it, on what matters here. Yeah, I mean, one of the basic co-op principles for the entire world is a democratic sort of organization. And thus, so we have, which may, but anybody can shop here. Anybody can shop here, right, correct. If you choose to be a, a, a member, um, owner, then you get a discount and you get to vote for a board of directors and so have this, a say. So this cooperative has been here for how long? We were founded in 1976, so, we got, so 31 years. Okay, and, and it's gone through several stores, and we've sort of, you know, a few years ago, we, I mean, we moved, it feels like just a little while ago, well, and all of a sudden... 14, 15 years ago, <laughs> we're, but... We're moving, I mean, we're running out of space. Yes, we are bursting at the seams in our current location. And so what, how did that, how did this get embarked and, and, and going? Probably five or six years ago, the board of directors and myself decided that we wanted to expand and build a new store and have be a more full service to the community and so we searched for the proper site for a long time and we finally found this um, and it seemed like a really good site and we had a great developer and contractor and architect um, mm -hmm. that were already sort of involved in it and we the board formed a design committee that was made up of members uh, staff board members, myself, and we sat down and started sort of in philosophical in the beginning, and mm -hmm. Jeff Gold, our architect, uh, helped us put that on paper, and we went through permutation after permutation after permutation um, until we got it right. Until you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> would you give me a little tour of what, oh, what would you look forward certainly, to? Certainly, certainly. Come on inside. So, what do we have that's new in this store here? Uh, well, we've expanded all of our areas that we already had. and Produce. The, produce, dairy, dairy, bulk, grocery, wellness, all those yeah, sorts of right. things. And we also um, we have a, a large deli that's brand new. That's huge. Um, from our little, you know, making, a few, uh, making some sandwiches to right. uh, a full deli that will have breakfast, lunch, dinner. You've got, um, I mean, you've four got kinds the whole of soup every day, hot and cold food, um, rotisserie chickens, lots of salads, hot and cold sandwiches. You're going to make me hungry. And they're not even espresso, here. Espresso, coffee. Wow. Um, this will all be grab and go kind of food that's prepared that you can just we pick up and take. This is the largest deli, I mean, a natural food deli that we'll have in our community. Oh, yeah, certainly. Certainly. Wow, I mean, this is going to be the place to come. I can see that. That's our plan. You've also, <laughs> <laughs> You've and also then, got fish. Yes, fresh, we, fresh, have, fresh. we have a, uh, an extensive fish and meat um, 
section that will have uh, fresh meat, local. I mean, some of it will be local, organic, natural, all of that. Um, That's one of the things I love. I mean, we have local grass-fed beef and local chicken, I hope, if we can get it. Local chicken's a little challenging, but yeah, I mean, you know, regional. It's, it's, that's good. I mean, that's that's an important part of this is that it's not just. But beef, lamb, uh, is, is local. Things, yeah. That's wonderful. I I'm, th I think this deli is going to be a popular spot. You said there are a lot of people going to be working here. Uh, Forty some people working in that's... the deli, and I mean, part of it is again with our philosophy of food, and food brings people together, and it builds community. And um, it, uh, I'll show you. We have a, a large seating area. Oh, let's that, go. Um, yeah, do okay. Oh, what a beautiful space. Look at this. Yeah, so we'll have oh. seating in here for about 40 people. Oh, this is going to um, be so nice. So, and, you know, a place for people to socialize and bring community together. And then the walls will have uh, uh, rotating art shows. Wonderful. I mean, that's community. Right. I mean, With local artists. The yeah. art and the food and the space. Look at this. And oh. yeah, we, we planted a, you know, tried to make it a beautiful, lively kind of place. So, I'm here with the architect of this wonderful building, Jeff Gold. Thanks for joining me. You're welcome. So, Thanks for having me. How did you get involved with creating this beautiful, beautiful structure? Well, I've been a member of Briar Patch for many, many years, and I'm committed to living and eating with natural foods and um, it just my involvement with this project uh, was just a natural segue into um, doing the design of the market and um, the main kind of focal point was the commitment to go green and to register this project for LEED certification. So tell us what's LEED? Well, LEED -E -E stands for Leadership in Environmental and Energy Design. And it's legislated by the US GBC, which stands for United States Green Building Council. Okay. And it's a nonprofit in Washington that got started in the early 90s based on a Europe and Canadian model. And they give you a scorecard to assess how you're going to design and build a building that okay. has sustainable okay. principles. And I understand there's different levels that you can attain, attempt to attain, right? There's basic, silver, and platinum. Okay. And uh, we're uh, going to be achieving the, the, the basic level. Okay, good. And, and what kinds of things did you have to think about? How did you get, how did you get into having it be green and making those decisions? One of the major events was to hold a, a, a weekend workshop with the board, with all the design uh, consultants and engineers, and to just to talk about the process and the commitment and what kinds of decision making would be involved. And after that workshop, it was very clear that we wanted to do it and that we could do it, and that we felt that it was an important step for Briar Patch to commit to this. Well, it's a real statement. Yeah. I mean, it's a statement of the continuation of the values that Briar Patch is about, living gently on the earth. Exactly. Here. It's about sustainability and trying to live within our means and being very conscious about using the materials and being sensitive to the energy that goes into supporting this building. So while we are here outside, what kinds of things did you think about for the outside? Well, on the outside, you know, some of the decisions included uh, using uh, drought tolerant plants and mm -hmm. minimizing irrigation so mm -hmm. we're not uh, throwing a lot of water out in the air. We're uh, containing all the storm water on site with a retention basin so we're trying to minimize any impact to downstream watersheds. We're incorporating bike racks and connections to the sidewalk and trying to make this as accessible as possible. And it's on a bike route, on a bus route. It's on a best bus route and we also, there's a, we're tying into a trail system ah, that, nice. that weaves um, across Linton Hill. Okay. And, and what are the, so in the LEED certification they're looking at materials, the design, the efficiency and energy, what else? I don't know what else you think about. 
there's a, there are six categories. One has to do with the siting of the building. And of course, the building was sited to be able to handle a, a large photovoltaic um, array uh -huh. on the roof okay. oriented to due south. So there's the site component, then there's the materials that you use, um, the embedded energy in those materials, and are the materials recycled, and what is the, what is the toxicity level of the, build, of the materials. Um, the energy that goes into lighting and heating and cooling the building. And then there are, um, there's water, which is, um, you know, how is water used inside the building in terms of uh, that, that there's um, motion sensors on the faucet so that water only comes out when, when someone comes before it. So um, Anyway, we had to look at each one of those categories and make critical decisions about what was going to be used and figuring out, you know, how it could be done in an affordable manner. That's an important consideration, given this is not a wealthy corporation that's building, no. that has built this building, but local people. And, uh, right. We, and were very, we were very sensitive to costs in, in evaluating every system and every material. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you want to go inside and look at some of these? Sure. Let's go okay. see. Well, here we are in the bulk department. Uh -huh. And uh, these little cubbies will be containing the teas and, okay. and uh, herbs. Okay. And these cubbies are made out of a 100% recycled product. So it's like particle board? It's like particle board, but it has no formaldehyde I in the glues. Yeah. So okay, it's, yeah. uh, so this it's is a, a new product right. on the market that's available to homeowners as well as for commercial use. And it has a special catalyzed um, varnish on, on this so that it can wipe down easily. And those. And, and you said no formaldehyde, so it's the same thing with the varnish, that you don't, aren't going to get a lot of um, there, there's toxicity? There's no, no toxicity, no off-gassing. Nice. It's, nice. a, it's a very stable product. And then just below this, in these drawers here, is finished with bamboo, which is also a sustainable product. Mm -hmm. and, is that why, is, why is bamboo so bam sustainable? Bamboo is sustainable because it grows like a, a grass. It's very fast-growing. Uh -huh. and. Uh, you can take the, it's, it's grown on plantations and on a rotation Here basis. Here in the United States? This or is, is actually Asia? Asia? A, from Asia, uh -huh. yes. Okay. Because the, uh, it takes a particular kind of climate to, uh, for it to grow. And then this material here, the countertops, is a composite. Uh, we looked at several possibilities uh, before uh, choosing this. Um, and this is uh, totally impervious and extremely durable. A composite and of what? I mean, what's it made out of? It's made out of a combination of natural uh, particulate aggregates mm -hmm. and, um, and also uh, uh, resins that hold it together. Because, I mean, it looks like granite. It, it, it's has, very uh, it has a very nice texture very nice, and uh, color to feel it. To yes. It. And for your for your floors, we've got what kind of flooring in here? This is concrete, and this is your, it was poured and it looked, after pouring it, just like a regular gray concrete floor. Ugly. And then, <laughs> and then we came in and we polished it. So we had Ooh, these grinders that actually took the cement down and polished it down into this fine, so you, what you nice see smooth, down yeah. here is yeah. actually the sand in oh, the concrete. It's very smooth. It's very and you nice. polish it because the aggregate will wear better. I mean, it's a very durable surface. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, and then after polishing it, we put a stain on it. And you'll see as in other places of the store, we actually wove a, uh, a stream um, That's such fun. Through, the, through the market. Yeah. And we then we put circles of green in different departments. So it's really nice to this, have the, you know <clears throat> down there look sort of natural. Yeah, with what you've done, even with it being concrete. Right. Yeah, it's a very soft feeling, and mm -hmm. the other attribute to this polished finish is that there's no waxes and no um, sealers that are required. So all it takes is is a um, a wet mop. For that's, maintaining. Now that's long. I so mean, we're talking long about long-term, term, low maintenance, 
no That's no nice. toxicity in all those sealers and and uh, so this is speaking of sealers what did, did you you probably did on your cabinets and also on your paints in here right we used uh, low and no VOC paints for all the wall surfaces so that means not a lot of volatile no volatile organic compounds smelling ugly toxic things so after this there. was this store interior was finished there was no feeling of the smells I mean it really it has a yeah, very I'm, calming I can I can you know I will attest to that yeah. like it's like I don't smell new carpet smell or new right. paint smell it's exactly. not here it's it's very nice. That's nice that way. And we could we could talk about the light here. here. It feels uh, so open. I really love the we light. Have, light we have here. twelve skylights, and they're centered over each of the departments, and also in the office spaces. And the skylights are made in Yuba City. They're prismatic lenses, so they pull more of the natural sunlight down into the shaft. The shaft above this diffusing lens is painted with a highly reflective white paint. Okay. And then the lens is to diffuse that light more evenly. So you don't evenly. have a hot spot, Exactly. Because right? it feels, I mean, it's so lovely. It, with sort of an Asian feel to me with the way you've done the little grid mm -hmm. there. It's very nice. And then the, um, the pendant lights are the highest efficiency um, uh, compact fluorescent uh, uh, tubes. In, in these hanging fixtures. And, uh, you know, buildings use about 40% of the electricity that's consumed in the, in the world. In the world, yes. 40%? So, that's a you lot. You know, how we use electricity for lighting our spaces is, is very critical to trying to pull down the amount of mm -hmm. electrical demand, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which in turn, you know, is related to how much coal we burn or the, the hydroelectric dams that we build. So this lighting system is controlled by, uh, it's time sensitive and it's user sensitive. You go into different parts of the market or the, the offices especially and there's no switches anywhere in the market. You walk into the space and the lights turn on. Uh -huh. When you leave the space, they the turn lights off. turn off. That's nice, that's nice. So if buildings are using 40% of our electricity, how much Maybe. Are we reducing in this building? This building is consuming about 30% less than any other store of its kind of this size. Congratulations. Yeah, that's, Congratulations. That's through the measures that we're talking about. So I want to also take a look at, that's one part of your energy picture is your lighting, right? Heating, cooling, refrigeration, freezing, you know, all of that. Well, let, let's take a walk up to the to the mezzanine level and look at the sort of the guts of the store of what how okay. all of these cases are refrigerated and how the space is heated and cooled. Great, I'll follow you. Okay. Well here we are in the loft and up here is all the equipment, the, the guts of the store. Wow. wow. This is what supports all the refrigeration equipment. These two units here actually provide all of the compressors for the cooling, refrigeration, the walk-in cases. And the freezers too? Yeah, the, the freezers, everything that's, uh, and this is, there's a, a huge computer behind this control panel. So you can program each unit. And this is also tied into the computers to the general manager's computer and also the, the company that's going to be troubleshooting this. So they're, they're keeping status on, on everything. There's a, there's a complete record. Uh -huh. okay. So we can actually monitor the performance of this equipment. And why is this and is this something new and different? This is very new. This is only a few years old. Really? Yeah, this is new technology. All the compressors behind this panel are a half a dozen compressors. Okay. And they're staged so that there's not one big compressor, but the compressors run at, on an as-need basis. Ah, so this ah. is a, the most energy efficient piece of equipment made for store refrigeration. So when you, because that's going to get a huge energy sink. To, this, was to a, this was a major commitment for Briar Patch and, and also for the LEED certification process that this really is what pulled our energy consumption down. Ah, I was going to say, to really, to bring and it back And then down. This, this panel over here, um, this is the brain that controls the, the space heating and cooling. All right. And what, we're, what we've done here is we've coupled these two together. 
whereas the excess heat that's given off by the refrigeration process conversion yes. is then recycled to heat the, room, the, the store itself. Brilliant, because those compressors make heat. Exactly. And then it's, it's actually brought over and it's controlled through this panel ah. to, bring, to, to warm the store. Now, how because do you... Because the store has so much excess cooling thrown off by the refrigeration cases that you're actually heating the store more often than, 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 you're, than you think about. So, so we're heating the store by refrigerating it? Correct. I mean... I mean, it's a, the refrigeration is helping that heating process. Well, that's, I mean, that's what we need to do is not wasting any of our heat exactly. or cold, right? right? Okay. And then um, as we come down, these, these are actually the furnaces that are heating the offices, and they're all zoned. So oh. only the spaces that are being used are being heated. Smart. And there's no thermostats to, to tamper with. It's all based upon occupancy sensors. So and you get more bodies in there and it's warmer, it's not going to... Exactly. Oh, good. And it's also good. time controlled. So we're not heating the spaces when they're not used. And then down in this corner are the four, four hot water on-demand heaters. So we don't have a tank sitting with hot water just consuming energy. And just sitting but there taking energy. If there's a, a, a need for water, a call for water in the deli or the kitchen, then the water is cycled through. There boil, this is like a, a, a boiler. The water passes through it and is heated on demand. Right. So, it, so, so the flame bursts. We have this at home. Correct. So the water starts to come through and it heats it up exactly. on the way through. Exactly. So you have one for each, for different right. places? And they, mo they, they actually, it, it the, it depends upon the quantity of water that's called for. And oh. so at any one time, if there's a call in the kitchen for dishwashing and cooking, we might be demanding 20 gallons a minute. So all oh, of these might the, fire the, off when we have the higher demand. So that's going to be, this is natural gas? This says, is all natural right. gas, okay. right. And these, these are you know, 90, 98% efficient. So this is, this is also state-of-the-art equipment and a commitment to going mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. a higher energy efficient uh, system. But these are models for anybody's home, anybody's building. Right, these can be used in, in your home. And then, and then for electricity, um, my Well, we also have over here Oops, a I ladder missed. that goes up to the roof. And of course, up on the roof, we have a, um, a photovoltaic panel array and uh, we have all the refrigeration and heating equipment. All right. And insulation like crazy. All through There's the roof. There's a door up there. It. If you go through that door, you'll go into a big mechanical well that's all painted white to reduce, reduce the amount of uh, re heat absorption wow. in the store. This is bright. This would be too bright on a... On a summer day, you'd be blinded. Yeah. Robin, come on up. Oh, it's bright out here. Wow. Yeah, it's very bright. And it's bright because of this white membrane roof that we installed. Doesn't require any petroleum product to manufacture. That's nice. And it's highly reflective, so there's less heat gain to the building. And these are the skylights yeah. that are composed of prismatic lenses. So that more light is gathered and directed down into the shaft. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's this big thing? This tall thing is called the cooling tower. <laughs> and so this is actually what is cooling all the refrigeration cases and all the walk-in uh, coolers. And so it's recycling the water. The water, it's just by running through these blades that it's cooling? Exactly. That's great. So eventually you have to add water. Some of it's going to evaporate. There is an automatic, this is an automatic fill uh -huh. right here. So a little bit of water is being added. Just like in your toilet. It's, it's, it's the exact same principle. <laughs> nice. So here we are at the, this, is, this unit heats the store uh, and cools the store. And these pipes Ooh, are, warm. are connecting the excess heat from the refrigeration system to the space heating. So this is the linkage where we're capturing the excess heat and using it for the for the space heating. And then at 
At this end, we have a what's called an economizer that brings in 30% fresh air into the heating system. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. one of the uh, advantages of this system is to increase the quality of the fresh air in the space. Yeah, I noticed by having a higher amount of intake. clean air instead of recycling and recycling and recycling Correct. the air. Yes. Yeah, and I noticed that you have little mats at the start of the store. Right. The mats in the front are really to help take the dirt off your shoes before coming in. Mm -hmm. And it's part of the improving the quality of the indoor air quality. Okay. Okay. And then back behind us here is the photovoltaic panels, which we moved over from the old briar patch mm -hmm. store and have oriented to the south. And um, this is offsetting some of the power being used by the store. So you could probably install a bunch more. We have all the piping and infrastructure set up to actually install a much, much larger system on the outside of, on the sloping roof facing mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. south. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we would be able to potentially provide 20 to 30 percent of all the electrical needs of this store, which are very large because of all the equipment, sure. uh, by the sun. Thank you and for this tour. This is exciting. <laughs> I mean, what I can see is everybody, you know, invest in your solar panel. We'll have this, you know, named our panels to add to this. You're, it's exciting to see a smallish community of member-owned group commit to this kind of forward thinking. And, I bet it's been exciting. It's been very exciting. It's been a real collective effort by many, many people. That's great. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. Thanks a lot. Well, someday, very soon, I'm going to be sitting at this checkout counter and writing my check for what I want here, my new briar patch. I'm so pleased to <laughs> excited for everybody. What inspires you? What are you, what are you looking forward to here? Um, I'm looking forward to all of the people who've put so much effort into everything we've done has taken literally hundreds of people, um, a lot of it volunteer time, and even the people who are getting paid go put, pushing themselves mm -hmm. to, the, to the limit. Um, and as you can see, we have a little ways to go, but we're going to pull it together in the next 30 days. Wow, 30 and days? 30, <laughs> 28, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, that's what I love about my job is, uh, community and bringing people together and having a team that works really well together. It's here. It shows. It feels. And I think the community will welcome this with open arms and open hearts. Thank you. Thank you. You're watching Peak Moment, Community Responses for a Changing Energy Future. I'm Jenea Donaldson and join us next time.